While it was the railroads that made Buffalo a major transportation hub for our nation, it was a different type of railroad that transformed the lives of thousands of slaves. And tonight, Eddie Dobashevitz continues the tale of Buffalo's role in the Underground Railroad with part two of the Queen City Chronicles, Flight to Freedom. These days in downtown Buffalo, there are railroad tracks that take people back and forth between work, sporting events, and shows. But there was a time in Buffalo when a different type of railroad ran in only one direction, north. And the last stop on that line was a little place known as Freedom. There were those bounty hunters who were looking for slaves to send them back. It's estimated that 100,000 slaves escaped the horrors of bondage in the south for the freedom of the north, utilizing a network known as the Underground Railroad. From the south, they were told, follow the waterways and the North Star. As pastor of a church that was once a stop on the Underground Railroad, Bishop William Henderson knows a thing or two about the slaves and their quest for freedom through Buffalo. I would ask the kids, how do you think they would get across? They said, they swim. I said, I let me take it down in three hands. That Niagara River is very swift. Once here, there were still bounty hunters to avoid and treacherous waters to confront. Thankfully, many people in western New York wanted to help the slaves in their quest for freedom. Nobody gives any credit to them. the American natives. They would take them across in canoes and on rafts. Even though the American Slave Act was signed into law by the last U.S. president not affiliated with Democrats or Republicans and former Buffalo boy Millard Fillmore, many in government thought the American Slave Act was neither just nor fair, and bounty hunters found the people of Buffalo to be not so helpful in their endeavors. And in some cases, the white population delayed the enforcement of the Slave Act. Judge Ambrose was the judge. If they came in the morning when the court opened, he would tell the bounty hunters, excuse me, I've got to go to the voice room. And that trip would be about three hours. Is there a lesson to be learned from the actions of our predecessors here in Buffalo? That's why we're called the city of good neighbors. Opportunities for people of color have been here in Buffalo. While we're getting bad grades today, there were times when we were a model for the rest of the country and we need to become a model again. On the shore of the Niagara River, I'm Eddie Dobashevitz, and these are the Queen City Chronicles.